Hi guys, welcome back to TNG Productions. My name is Tom and I'm super excited because I get to talk about contrast paints and finally got our hands on them today. Now, I really was interested as a non-painter to see what these paints can do because they're really marketed as like, it's like talent in a bottle that the inks used to be. So what you're going to see is me trying out the flesh tones today. Now I'm going to use the three new flesh tones which are Gilliman Flesh, Dark Oath Flesh and Fire Slayer Flesh. And I'm going to be using the different undercoats. So the model on the left you can see is using Grey Seer as an undercoat. The model in the middle is using the new Wraithbone. And the one on the right actually was undercoated the Dwarf with Zandri Dust with a Zenithal of Grey Seer over the top. Because I wanted to see how these contrasts would go over the old undercoats. So I'm using a regular Army Painter Regiment Brush. And you can see here we're going to start with Gilliman Flesh. And first thing I'll say is these paints go on really easily. You'll notice that I'm painting from the lid rather than from the pot. And actually if, on retrospect I would make a really big recommendation to actually just go straight from the pot to the model. Which is how they market it. And actually I think you really can slot this on and get really good results. But what you'll be able to see here is how I've left it. And when it dries I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So that was the grace here. This is the wraith bone. And honestly for the Gilliman Flesh I think I prefer it going on the wraith bone. Now the wraith bone is supposed to be used for like a a warmer tone and I think that goes really well with this flesh color I think Gilliman flesh is going to be the one you use the most it's going to be the one that comes out for your space marines for your stormcast eternals it's going to be great and speaking to my local store the uh, Brickcraft in Southport they were suggesting that actually this is probably going to be the one that is going to be flying off the shelves the most and I think they're going to be right with this so you can see the dwarf with the Zandri dust I just want to see how the paint would go and actually the reason I'm showing you at the start the undercoats is because they are satin undercoats, the grey sea and the wraith bone. And honestly, the paint does go on smoother. Uh, you'll notice here that I kind of go on a little bit further on the legs and the body where it's going over the Zandri dust. So we're going to cut ahead in a second and we'll show you what they look like dried. Here they are. So the grey sea here with this barbarian you can see has gone on really, really nicely. I think probably a thicker coat be necessary, but you can see it has done exactly what it says. It's shrunk into the recesses and highlighted the kind of areas that need it. However, you can see the wraith bone on this model is fantastic. I think that's a really healthy tanned flesh tone as they call it. The dwarf I'm relatively happy with. It shows me it can go on the old undercoats, but to be honest, I'm so impressed with Gracie and wraith bone. I think I keep it that way. Now, we're going to move on to the second flesh tone here, which you can see is dark oath flesh. So you can see the Gracie model with the sword here. We've got the wraith bone, which is the leader of the godsworn hunt. I can't remember her name now, but she's amazing. And then another dwarf that's got the Zandri dust with the Zenithal over the top of it. Now the Dark Oath Flesh is a slightly darker tone. Obviously I'm going from light to dark. However, it actually goes on a little bit smoother than I was expecting. Now the model that you can see me painting here is probably my favourite outcome. And you'll see in a second. I've kind of grown in confidence as I've used it. This is literally my first time using the contrast paints. And I'm deliberately using the Regiment Bush because I think it's the way everyone else will use this. So I start slopping it on in a bit more detail. And I think that's actually what gets me my better results. So again, that is probably a good recommendation there. Just making sure that I don't let it pull in any areas as you can see. And making sure that I go right up to the seams of certain parts of the body. Now going on to the Wraithbone model here, this model is quite tricky. I think obviously with these contrast paints they need to go over models that have got a lot of recesses because any flat areas, if you've looked at other YouTubers and what they've done with Power Armor and Stormcast Eternal Armor, it requires a little bit of work because it wants to stretch over those due to the opacity and due to the kind of tensile strength, is it? Whatever it is, viscosity. Um, these models here are full of musculature detail and I think it's really valuable just to see how the different colors sit on the different undercoats. So you can see me finishing off the Dark Oath Flesh here. It's going on relatively nicely over the old Zandri Dust with the Wraithbone, uh, sorry, the Grey Seer Zenithal. And actually you'll see here that in this account, I actually quite prefer the Grey Seer undercoat on this model here. I think the Dark Oath Flesh gives it a really, really nice undertone, especially on the model. I think this mod miniature is beautiful. However, that being said, on the Wraithbone in the middle here, you can see the model's gone on well. I think I wish I would have done a thicker coat. If you look at her legs, the kind of translucency of the paint is really coming through there and I think if I had done it that thin on a grey serum coat I probably wouldn't look as good. As you can see it's relatively okay on the dwarf here, it's got a slightly different body structure so again it's showing you that it can go on different undercoat sprays. Finally we're going on to our last flesh tone for the humans that is and this is going to be Fire Slayer Flesh. Now this is a darker tone and I think you can really get away with putting this one on quite heavy. So for this one I've only done it on a Gracier undercoat, partly because I was running out of Godsworn Hunt models, and also partly because actually this dwarf that you'll be able to see has been zenithaled with the Wraith Bone. So slightly different, hopefully that'll give you the indication there of the slight differences. 
Now, as you can see, the confidence is improving here. I'm really shaking the pot to make sure that the lid is full of paint and making sure they get good sheen, moving the paint around as I paint it. You can see she's got a really good coating there, and actually it really shows through afterwards. Same with the dwarf. I'm kind of, again, growing in my confidence as I'm using it and being able to kind of get into all those nooks and crannies. Now, the paint does want to pull into the recesses. That's what it's designed to do. However, as long as you keep making sure you move it around, that's fine. I don't think I'd recommend painting a second coat of the flesh tone. I know some people have recommended that. I don't feel confident in that, and I'll show you when they come onto the orcs exactly why. But this is the finished article. So on the grey seal undercoat, you can see we get this beautiful darker skin tone. And actually, I think for other game types that have uh, a greater variant, shall we say, of skin tone, especially like the God Sworn Hunt with Shade Spire or Nightfall, this skin tone adds a little bit of variety in your warband, and I think, you know, there's now got three slightly different skin tones, and I'm really going to play with the browns and the colours that go on their armour as well. Now, obviously, it's our channel, so I couldn't leave it with just human flesh tones. I've got to give the orc uh, flesh a go. So this just went on the grey seer, and this was simply because I think I'm leaning towards the grey seer as the undercoat. I think it's the more natural one. You know, people tend to undercoat in grey anyway. So I'm slopping on this model here, but I do the full uh, Gerzag warband from Night Vault. You can tell what I need to be painting up at the moment. And I'll show you how it looks, but I think this is probably a real selling point for contrast. I think these deep colours that are vibrant, they really keep the detail. And I think that's incredibly valuable. I was talking to my other half and saying that essentially rather than doing the base coat, then the layering, then the ink and whatever, look at the detail on Gerzak's face there. None of that is lost. And I think all I can do now, nice easy, I've got the pots of the grey seer. I can just go over his teeth and then use the, the bone colour, the skeleton horde, I believe it's called to go over but if you look at the musculature I'm going to be really interested to see what colour I want to do the armour I really want to do the yellow but that's been done to death by other people so I think I might just try the black and see how that looks over the grey seer but you can see the grey seer offers a fantastic cool palette and I would love to try actually the wraith bone underneath but I think with the orcs the green is such a strong tone you look at the muscles and the fingers it really really comes through fantastically well so at the moment I've got nothing bad to say about the contrast paints. I am by no means a solid painter and by no means a quality painter. And this has really given me a hell of a lot of confidence painting things that I'm usually really, really struggling with. So that brings us to the end of looking at these contrast paints. I want to say a massive thank you to both Games Workshop and, as I said, our friendly local gaming school store, the uh, Brickcraft in Southport, for providing these a little bit early to get some videos out to you guys. If you are interested in supporting that store, they are amazing people. There's a link in the description below. I think they're actually going to run a competition for this video where they're going to be giving away a No No Fear or Tempest of Souls box. So if you're based in the UK, have a look at there, give them a like and give them a shout from us. And obviously, if you enjoyed this, drop us a comment about what other paints you'd like to see next and I will make sure I get on it. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content, it means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.